Good morning, folks. You're watching a little sun diving comet come in here just above the blocking disc arm that cancels solar glare. It did make a good run, but disintegrated on approach. As you can see in 171 angstroms of ionized iron here, we've got two bright points on the north incoming from the eastern limb. We'll start there over at spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star without much activity other than the rotation through and appearance on the left of another coronal hole. Of those two bright spots, only the leading group has any umbral cores beneath her. The magnetic overlay shows this clearly as the trailing portion is weak, and yet so is the lead in a way because the split magnetism is driving the lack of solar flares. To get that power, opposite polarities need to be interacting. The solar wind here shows that indeed the stream did arrive last night from the coronal hole but was not significantly strong and so has not produced any geomagnetic instability. The stream may intensify over the next day so it's worth watching that as well. The culprit is the departing coronal hole. The next one is incoming from the left. Advanced observers can note the phi angle shift in the solar wind yesterday that put interplanetary fields pointing sun to earth during the Prince Edward Island quake. Top of the day registering at 6.7. Folks, today's top stories are all about the micronova and the catastrophe cycle. We're zooming in to a nebula north of the galactic plane and one that appears to have its progenitor still sitting there shining brightly in the middle. A nova shell release that does not destroy the star makes this a recurrent nova candidate with its host still alive in the center to do it again someday. Recurrent nova might begin their blast cycle early in their life process. Not only do rings exist at this nascent system, but so do concentric blobs of material. This looks a lot like the 1997 outburst of the t pix recurrent nova. In the last episode we've had at the catastrophe cycle, Solar Micronova 3, we explored the potential trigger which would be the scaled up version of Earth's magnetic sector boundary crossing. Just like how Earth doesn't take magnetic disruption when we cross the solar equator, but the solar plasma current sheet, the Sun should react similarly to a galactic skirt and indications are beginning to suggest we do indeed have an undulating torus and outflow structure. SGRA, center of the galaxy by the way in these images, the top one shows the relative torus nearby but the bottom one shows how the plane is not flat but wavy. Folks that's huge because it means the sun crosses it likely much more often than it crosses the actual equator of the galaxy. While my interview with Glenn Beck yesterday focused on only the earth side, the pole shift and resulting problems, it was an exceptional interview and everyone who voiced concern I thank you, but it turned out to be a positive attempt to share this community's information. It's linked for you below so you can watch if you want. We've got your wind maps followed by shots of our star to close and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.45 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.